Hey everybody, Sean again, another episode of the Heavy Shield. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, how to pull your head out of your fourth point of contact, uh, aka your ass. Um, another another common phrase for it uh, in the mental health or certainly lately in the military uh, field uh, as far as um, mental resilience training, uh, MRT as we call it in the military, uh, it's called hunt the good stuff. Um, find the good things in your life uh, as opposed to focusing on what's going wrong or what's shitty. Um, it, I'll be honest, back when the, this hunt the good stuff uh, concept first came out in the military, a lot of us, myself included, uh, thought it was pretty lame. Uh, we, we used to got we used to be told, uh, tell me three good things that went, went great today. Tell me gr three positive things about so-and-so you know when you're ranting and raving about some dickhead lieutenant that got you lost on a patrol uh it's, it's the last thing you want to focus on uh when you're in this mindset uh of focusing on the negative uh and that's really what it is if you're in the wrong mindset that you know you got uh all, all these things going on and, and you're focusing on what went wrong um and, and that's common not not just to ptsd but people in general uh, you, f you, you focus more on what went wrong as opposed to what went right uh, and how do I keep that moving forward. Um, it, it's a weird dichotomy because, uh, especially in the military, and I'm sure uh, other you know, civilian uh, aspects or sort of jobs or corporations or um, disciplines have the same concept, uh, but in the military we call it an AAR or After Action Review. Uh, and we don't just focus on what went wrong with the operation, whether that's a patrol mission or um, a, a class you taught or somebody else taught um, or uh, a real-world trauma event where a patient comes in, you have to treat them. It doesn't matter if it's training or real-world. Uh, the military, we're constantly have, uh, holding AARs. Um, and, and again, that, that's the focus. It's not just what did we fuck up and what what do we need to change but also what went well and what do we need to keep uh, and maintain as SOPs uh, standing operating procedures um, moving forward and also what can we push on to the next group uh, either a unit replacing us or uh, younger soldiers coming up and replacing us within a formation uh, what are those lessons learned um, things that went well uh, and so, so that that's that's become more of a focus in the military as far as AAR is concerned but somehow it kind of slips us by when uh, we're talking about our own mental health um, and, and that's kind of what I want to talk about today hunting that good stuff find, finding those um, sustains those things that we need to keep hold of and moving forward hey this worked for me I had a great day uh, or had a great weekend, you know, doing this. That works for me. Uh, I had a great time. I didn't focus on any of the bu bullshit going on. I didn't focus on the negativity. Um, I, didn't, I didn't think about this or that. Uh, it, I had a great time, and all I, all, I, was, I was in the moment. Uh, I found my zen, centered my chi, wh whatever concept you want, uh, you want to use, or utilize, um, it's focusing on the good stuff. Hunt the good stuff. Find the good things in your life, whether it's that day, that week. It doesn't have to be a daily exercise. You don't have to sit down and go, oh, I can't go to sleep until I think of three good things that went well today. May not be three things. Maybe more than three things. Um, but it, it, it's just the general concept of uh, hunt the good stuff is what I'm going to be talking about today. Um so, so some positive things uh, that that I've found that that helped me um, is uh, first first and foremost hanging out with family, especially my brother. I, I mentioned I've mentioned him in a couple of videos. Uh, he he's he's my best friend, has been since since we were kids, um, and since I've moved uh, back to the southeast, I've, where he lives, uh, been able to spend much more time with him. Uh, he's a carpenter uh, uh, in a union, 
in and uh, he, he's got all kinds of woodworking stuff in his garage. He's got a whole, basically a whole, sh whole wood shop in his garage. Um, and he's trying to, uh, is his part of, um, I'm sure it, it's his part of his way of trying to help me uh, find something to, to focus on and uh, some kind of uh, activity, uh, a, a positive activity uh, other than just sitting in my room by myself and drinking or read or reading or watching movies, uh, which by themselves aren't bad, but if that's all you do, uh, it, it can be, it can be bad. Uh, moderation in all things grasshopper. Uh, so he, he, uh, he, he was kind of pushing me towards that and, uh, and at least offering his, his, uh, um, facilities and, and material. Uh, and so, uh, when I first moved back here to Southeast, I, I was living with him for a little bit and, and I, I, I took him, took him up on it. Um, while he was at a work one day, uh, he'd kind of show me the ropes on how to use some, some routers and, uh, his table saw and, and sanders and some other things. Um, and so as a way to kill some time and just try and find my Zen and center my Chi, I made him a couple street signs. Uh, he lives on a um, private airfield and it's, uh, he, he had talked about, uh, it's kind of hard for, for UPS to, to find his address. Like, <laughs> like a lot of places here in the Southeast, uh, if you're living out in the sticks, it's hard for UPS to, to zero in on, uh, on, a, on a physical address, UPS or FedEx or whoever. Um, so I actually cut, um, some nice big flat pieces of nice wood and uh, did some r nice fancy routing around the edges uh, found some uh, reflective decal uh, address decals from Home Depot uh, slapped them on there spray painted the whole thing white um, but before I put the decals on and then, and then uh, spray coated it or uh, clear coated it um, and really churched them up made them look look pretty nice and I mean you know I'm not gonna be able to s turn that into a business and, and make a million bucks out of it but it, it was nice you know making a couple signs uh, took me uh, half a day um, and, uh, and and it benefited him uh, as far as being able to, to zero in uh, FedEx and, and UPS and uh, uh, mail, mail drivers delivering packages to his home so it was a win-win um, and I had a great time doing it uh, got to you know work on some wood do some man shit uh, or some woman shit if that's what you're into whatever um, it was uh, it was kind of, kind of therapeutic and uh, I kind of w wish I had that shit at home so I could if I just felt the urge I could you know midnight or two in the morning or whenever I woke up feeling like shit or in the afternoon I could just pop out in my my garage and, and, and knock that shit out but uh, um, so that's that's one thing that uh, uh, I was able to do that uh, really helped and um, w w was a good outlet uh, for, for for my depression. Uh, something else we did together, me and my, my brother, um, we created a whole new sport called Dollar Ball. Uh, he had a uh, he had bought a um, badminton net for his backyard. He's he's got. Uh, about five, four or five acres. Um, he, had, he had bought a badminton net. Uh, one day we we're out there, and where he where he's at is, is kind of windy, and the shuttle cocks, shuttle cocks, uh, were, were just getting blown all over the place by 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 the winds. Uh, because, like I said, where he's at, there's not a lot of tree coverage. It's kind of wide open, so winds just took the, these um, birdies all over the place and it was no fun to play uh, it was just wasn't just me and him one-on-one -on -one. it was um, uh, he, he we had his uh, his girlfriend's son and his girlfriend's daughter's husband over so it was, it was two on two basically his extended family um, over playing and it was just with a shuttlecock it was no fun so we said well let's get something heavier well, if we need, if we get a, getting a, a projectile that's heavier, turned out to be a ball. Uh, we need heavier rackets because the badminton rackets wouldn't wouldn't take the strain. So uh, we went to Walmart and got a couple uh, twelve dollar 
uh, tennis rackets and we found a perfect ball at the Dollar General store just down down the road from his place so we called it Dollar Ball and it's kind of like two-person tennis um, you can let it bounce once and then hit it over um, and there's really no in or out of bounds because we're not that retarded about rules um, and it, it turned out to be a, so much fun uh, so we created a new new game and patent pending uh, <laughs> probably get a partner ho hopefully you know living our dream uh, live it living our our truth we're gonna uh, partner with Dollar General and Walmart or, or not Walmart but uh, um, Wilson or you know some racket company and we're gonna be millionaires because we created this game called Dollar Ball it was a lot of fun uh, creating the game one uh, two playing it we still play I think I think we came up with the concept uh, last fall so fall of 2020 so we've been playing it for almost a year now and it's just it's so much fun um, so, you know, getting out, getting, getting with family and cr I cr we created a game that nobody had ever played before. Guarantee you, nobody had ever played before. First time it happened was here with me. Uh, so that, that, that was fun. Uh, another thing is, um, my, my brother's huge into hiking and camping. Uh, he hikes the, uh, Appalachian Trail, uh, here from the southeast up uh, through Georgia, from Georgia through uh, North Carolina and even further. Um, so he, he's really become an outdoorsman uh, despite his experience uh, being stationed at Fort Drum with, with light infantry. Don't know how. Um, but uh, even with, with all my years, you know, being, being uh, in combat arms units and sucking at outdoors and living in snow drifts, um, I have managed to, to, to still differentiate that from what I do with, with my brother. Um, it, it's, we don't do a lot of, a lot of long hiking or heavy hiking, you know, uh, heavy weights or up and down crazy inclines because my body just can't handle it. And he, uh, he, he's a year and a half younger than me. So even though he's in a lot better shape than me, he, he's, he's hit by old itis as well. Um. But we still we still go camping. Uh, we go out for a night or two, um, not far from the car. So I mean, it's we're not going way out in the sticks and um, you know way out from support or a base camp or whatever. Um, I just came back this past weekend from upstate Georgia, uh, camping right off the Appalachian Trail, and it was a lot of fun. Stupid humid because it's fucking Georgia. Fuck Georgia. Uh, sorry if you live in Georgia, um, or if you're from there, but, uh, uh North Carolina, we, we do a lot of camping up there. Uh, it's much higher elevation, uh, and therefore it's cooler and less humid. Um, uh, but, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, just, I mean, this past weekend, you know, we didn't, we didn't really do anything. We, we, uh, walked maybe about, I think it was 0.2 miles from, from our camp, uh, down down the AT to, to the nearest water source, a stream. Uh, and that's where we got water from. My brother's got a little, little pump filter, uh, filled water. We brought hot dogs and um, macaroni salad and uh, a couple of MREs just, just for shits and grins because uh, it had been years since my brother had, had seen the new MREs and uh, the other two guys we went with um, uh, had never seen them. Uh, so we had, we had some fun, you know, and we didn't do a lot of stuff. We, uh, we ended up making a deck of cards. Uh, my brother bought a, um, big box of, uh, this little snack pack size of, of chips like Lay's and Frito, Fritos and stuff. Um, so we, someone forgot to bring a deck of cards. So we ended up cutting the cardboard into 52 semi, uh, poker card shape sizes in with a ballpoint pen writing J and doing a half ass club which looked more like a tree like a four year old drawing of a tree that was a jack of clubs uh, and we ended up play, playing some cards uh, watching some uh, caveman TV you know building a fire and just staring into the flames uh, roasting hot dogs um, and just bullshitting and it, it was a great time 
we, we didn't do anything crazy or, you know, uh, didn't ride rapids or anything like that. But we, we got away, we got away from civilization, away from the bullshit in our jobs and stuff like that for, for a couple of days. And, uh, it, it was great. Um, so it was, it was a good, good way to, to recharge my batteries and, um, realize that it's not all about me. It's, you know, reconnect with nature again, all whatever you get out of it. Um, that, 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 that was, uh, it, the important thing was I was with family I was with my brother and, and, and some some good people, um, and I was able to to interact with these people and, and feel like a normal human being uh, for for I don't want to say for once, but uh, don't get a lot of chances to do that and just be completely open uh, and, and talk with people that understand me or might understand me uh, better than than uh, people either at work or just some random strangers in a, in a Kroger somewhere. Um, something else, uh, I've done recently is I got a new job or got a job. I haven't had a job in a couple of years. Uh, it's been kind of floating since I moved back here from Washington. Uh, my last job, I was a manager at a sporting goods store and, uh, it took me a year after I left active duty to get that job. And that was only because I was running out of money. Um, and it had its, it had its pluses, um, you know, helping kids get kitted up for, for sports, especially if their parents had no idea about the sport. You know, I don't, I don't know how many parents asked me, you know, uh, if socks went over the shin guards, the soccer shin guards, or if the shin guards went on top of the socks. Um, but uh, it, it, was, it was cool, you know, seeing kids get all excited about getting kitted out for whatever sport they're playing, football, baseball, soccer, whatever, wrestling. Um, like I said, especially if their parents knew shit about the sport, it was cool getting getting to see the kids getting kitted up and getting all excited. I'm like, oh, got these cool, crazy colored cleats or whatever the case may be. Um, but other than that, it was just fucking drag. It, it was basically um, Groundhog Day on a daily basis. Uh, it was just every single, or sorry, on a weekly basis. Every week was the fucking same. Monday, Monday did we did this. Tuesday we did that. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday was truck day. Boom, same thing. It was just constant cycle, week to week, and it just wore me down, dragged me down. After four years, couldn't fucking handle it. So, moved back here to be closer to family, um, and then I just kind of fell back into a, kind of a funk uh, as far as uh, seeking employment. Um, you know, still doing the reserve thing. Uh, it, it just, I, I fell back into a funk. I don't know. I, there's no other way to say it. Um, but uh, luckily, uh, about a month ago, my mom happened to, to she never looks at uh, um, the classifieds in the paper. Who does these days? No, that's not how you find jobs. You, you go through LinkedIn or Facebook or all, the, all this internet shit. Um, she just happened to be turning a page and she saw, bam, EMTs needed. Uh, so she, she told me about it and, uh, it was for, uh, an allergy department at a ear, nose, throat clinic. Um, and they needed certified EMTs. And so I looked, checked their website and it looked kind of cool, you know, uh, still in the medical field, but, uh, obviously, you know, <laughs> little to no trauma, uh, the, the worst thing that happens is someone has a bad reaction to an allergy shot and they're in the waiting room and I might have to give them a shot or, um, uh, do, do some mouth to mouth, you know, or CCPR. Uh, but that is so not, uh, a daily thing or a weekly or monthly or even yearly thing. It's the chances that are so out of the norm. It's unreal. Um, so basically I'm just, I'm giving allergy shots to folks that, that, uh, get regular shots to control wicked allergies to, um, you know, a animals, weeds, grasses, trees, molds, mites, stuff like that. And I'm also testing folks for, for allergies, um, and then everything else that, that all that entails. And so I'm just now starting my, my second week, uh, on that and, um, I, and I love it. 
I, I found my niche, uh, at least at least for now, um, and f for uh, as far as I can tell, the foreseeable future. Um, and it, it was just happenstance. So uh, the lesson learned out of that is, don't uh, shut yourself off to um, opportunities that just come by. I know. I know there's so many career, so many paths my life could have taken on the, on this uh, trip trip I've been on over the years. Uh, certainly since I've left active duty military, um, that I that, that have fallen fallen at my feet and I've overlooked for one reason or another because I was scared, because I was bored, because I couldn't give a shit, because uh, I'd rather do nothing. Um, I, there are so many opportunities I know that have fallen on my feet that, I, that I've dismissed out of hand for one reason or another. Um, and uh, somehow, some reason, I chose this one. I decided to pick it up and, and run with it. And uh, it, it's really worked out. Uh, it's got a lot of benefits. Um, I mean, besides pay and, you know, the normal benefits thing. Uh, they're associated with uh, the National Registry of EMTs. So any training I do... Uh, here at this job uh, automatically gets uploaded to the National Registry for CEUs. Uh, so that's another way besides just the reserves and, and the, the, the means and methods that the reserves um, uh, offers for maintaining my EMT certification. Uh, so that's a great benefit. I'm still not having to pay to uh, upkeep my EMT certification every two years or, or my CPR. Um, they want to make me uh, um, a CPR instructor because I've done that. In, I told them I've done that in the past and they're looking for another CPR instructor. So uh, hopefully within the next couple months, uh, I'll be getting my um, uh, PLS instructor certification um, and uh, just my, my, my past history and experiences just being an instructor in general, maybe not certified, but teaching, uh, you know, just classes, medical classes to, you know, CLS, uh, CLS or first responder type type of medical classes to infantry and cavalry guys, uh, everything from that to map reading to convoy operations to fundamentals of marksmanship, all all that those kind of uh, teaching uh, experiences that that I've maintained over over the years in the military. Um, they're they're grateful for in this job they're like oh awesome you've been an instructor cool we would love we so glad to have you we want to utilize you uh in that aspect as well as your normal uh job duties uh within this career so um that's been a huge huge benefit don't overlook opportunities when they come your way um don't be afraid to to jump on them and try it one of the big fears I always had of um, uh, back when I when I first left active duty, uh, I went a whole year without applying for jobs. Um, one because I had some money saved up. Two, uh, my biggest thing was I didn't want to be the new guy all over again. I don't want to be the guy going to a new career field, don't know shit. Uh, at the time, I was you know in my early forties. Who wants to start a new career in your early 40s and be the new guy and have some 20-something year old asshole uh, telling you how to do a job uh, and be over you as a, as a um, instructor, or teacher, or supervisor, or whatever the case may be? Um, that that was probably, uh, if I'm honest, has been uh, and and still was recently until recently my biggest hang-up, um, but. Luckily, I got an, uh, not just a great job, but with, with some really great people. Um, and uh, the the uh, allergy tech that was assigned as, as my uh, kind of coach, mentor, instructor, or whatever, uh, she's been there for quite a few years. Um, she she's an amazing in, in, instructor and, and teacher and coach. Uh, she we just so happens we have the same mentality uh, and approach to teaching. Um, start with the basics, hammer down the basics until, uh, until you, you're comfortable with them and then move on to the next step. Um, you know, uh, nearest I can equate it to is say marksmanship. 
learn learn how learn how to hold the rifle uh, and aim the rifle uh, and before you can squeeze the trigger and put rounds down range and then once you get get that the, the basic mechanics down how to how to fire w with um, iron sights once you get that down once once you're proficient at that then you move up to uh, high speed optics um, and then then you move once you get that down and you're comfortable with that then you move on to things like close quarter marksmanship uh, stuff like that high angle low angle shooting stuff like that um so uh that I, i've been i was lucky in that respect she, she's got the same kind of mentality teach the basics learn the basics get the basics down pat boom then move on um and, and it's been a hugely positive not not just for my bank account uh but for my self-confidence um it's first day i was scared as shit uh even, even though um, so most of the folks there, uh, have, they, they, we have to maintain at least the EMTB, uh, basic, um, certification to be, an, uh, allergy tech. Most of us do. Um, a lot of them are EMT advanced or, and or paramedics. Um, so I was kind of nervous about, well, you know, they're, they're paramedics, but, uh, I've got 22 years as a, as an army medic. Uh, and I'm a staff sergeant, so um, there are quite a few things that I can do uh, or, have, or have learned to do and know how to do um, that they've never done and never learned how to do. Uh, it doesn't make me better uh, than they are. Um, that's one thing I've always learned is that you're never too old or never too experienced to learn new things. Um, so I've tried to keep that mentality going in, and I think I've done it successfully, is... Um, being able to learn uh, from people that may hold a higher certification than I do, but with fewer years experience, but they've done this specific job, in this case, uh, uh, allergy tech, that I have zero experience in. Um, so that that's kind of the, the another struggle is, is uh, as you move forward and, and try new things, is try and keep that mentality that you don't know shit. You, well, you don't always know everything. Um, there's always someone out there that, that knows something more than you do. Um, even if they're, they're a civilian, they've never been to combat, who cares? Um, don't go into this thing like, well, I've, I've, been, I've been deployed 16 times and what the fuck have you done? Well, if you're in a new job that you've never, uh, never done before, they know everything more than you. Uh, doesn't matter one time that I was a band camp fuck you <laughs> so uh, that's that's another thing is, is you know I, I guess kind of manage your expectations and, and manage your um, your life experience with what you expect other people's life life experiences to be I don't expect everybody to be a, a combat veteran um, even though initially that's how I expected everybody to act or to perform, uh, show up 10 minutes prior to 10 minutes prior to when you're supposed to be there, um, attention to detail, manage every single little thing. And, uh, Jesus, you put the wrong shoe back in the wrong slot because there was one digit wrong on, on the name, uh, venture 5.6s and you put a venture 5.5 and the, that, stack of shoes come on really is, is it that important and is everybody going to have that same attention to detail as you no uh, odds are no sometimes yes but uh managing your expectations uh as far as what you bring to the table uh, and what other people bring to the table is, is a huge thing um i i made a conscious effort to go into the, this job to not go well when I was in Iraq I wasn't giving uh, allergy shots I wasn't testing people for allergies in Iraq this is completely new to me um, so uh, I made a conscious effort to, to go into it like I'm the 18 year old FNG uh, and they are the uh, the 20 year old 20 year veteran salty grizzly uh, E7 uh, and I got to listen to everything they say and it's worked out and it's great. It's a great environment. Everyone else is, uh, or most everyone else 
has worked in EMS, um, so you know they, they've run on run emergency calls on ambulances, uh, similar backgrounds to, to where I came up, um, and, and, it, and it's been really fulfilling so far. Like I said, this is just the start of my second week, and, and I'm already looking forward to going to work every day. Um, so again, the the takeaway from this is. Uh, don't shut yourself off to opportunities. Um, and I know even even just a year ago, two years ago, uh, if my mom had said, "Oh, I saw this uh, article in the paper. They're looking for this job," I'd be like, eh, I, "I don't know. Doesn't doesn't sound like me." You never know, right? If you apply for the job and they offer it to you, you, don't, you nothing saying you have to take it, but at least get out there and try. Uh, try new things. Um, so, uh, I think that's going to be all I have for today. I um, hope this has been helpful for, for, for some, if not all of you guys. Uh, like I've said before, um, if this none of this applies to you, hopefully uh, you know somebody in your life that it does apply to uh, and uh, share this uh, video with them. Uh, please subscribe to the channel and like the video at helps me uh helps youtube's algorithms help get gets uh the message out there to to more and more folks uh that that may need uh to hear uh their struggles uh from other people because we're all a lot of us are going through the same thing and the vast majority of us i know i personally speaking i thought i was the, the only one going through my own personal struggle so many people are going through the same thing so again please uh like and subscribe and share this video and thanks for listening and watching and i'll talk to you guys next time bye